Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to do the second Planeswalker deck from Guilds of Ravnica, uh, which is Vraska, Regal Gorgon, uh, which is a black and green deck, so it's going to be Golgari uh, as it's Ravnica. So yeah, let's dive in, let's look at the deck list here. So we've got uh, 25 creatures, 4 sorceries, 3 enchantments, 1 instant, 26 lands, and of course a single Planeswalker. Uh, so let's start taking a look at the contents of the deck. Uh, so let's have a look at Vraska, Regal Gorgon. So five are black and green, so on the more expensive side of these uh, Planeswalker deck, Planeswalkers, comes in with five loyalty. Uh, she's got a plus two, to put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature, and it gets menace in turn turn, which is, I mean, that's not dreadful, is it? Like a plus one, plus one counter and evasion, um, and it's plus two loyalty as well. Like that's not it's not awful, you know. There's definitely there's definitely worse, I think. Um, she's got a minus three just to dest uh, destroy a creature, which is again okay. And then her ultimate at minus ten for every creature card in your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. That's potentially really, like a really really bad, a really big amount. I'd say even if that's giving what three counters, I would say that's sort of that's sort of okay. But then you know, I mean, is that worth? <laughs> building up to it. I mean, I suppose if the game goes on long enough, you're maybe running low on resources. That might be like the final push you need. Um, and you might have a bunch of creatures in your graveyard by then. So yeah, that's I guess that's an okay ability. Um it's a shame it doesn't give like trample or anything, but it is like at least a permanent boost, I suppose. Um it's okay. I don't know if this warrants her being seven mana rather than the usual six, but yeah. Okay. Um and then her signature cards. So we've got two of Vraska's Stone Glare, uh, so four and a black and green, so super expensive. Um, destroy type creature, uh, you gain life equal to its toughness, which is... Yeah. Uh, and then search up uh, for Vraska Regal Gordon, Library or Graveyard, reveal it into hand and shuffle. Um, yeah, just expensive, isn't it? I suppose, I suppose it doesn't matter when Vraska is one herself, but like even then, like you'd want this to be cheaper, isn't it? Because it is, I mean, it's just a kill spell. Uh, just a kill spell it is removal it's still better than like some of these other signature spells just because it is removal and it's like a little bit of life gain um yeah i'm, I'm not super keen on it just because it is, it is really expensive i think um and then three attendant of raska so i think this might be in competition for the the worst planeswalker buddy we've had yet so far um so one a black and a green for a three three uh, when it dies, if you control a Vraska Planeswalker, you gain life equal to a tender of Vraska's power. So for, for three mana in two colours, you get a 3-3 three, three with no other abilities. And and when it dies, if you control Vraska, um, you you gain, you know, you know three life. Yeah, you know, most, most of the time, unless it's pumped up. Um yeah, that's just that's just really not very good at all. And it's so annoying that this takes up the spot of three potentially much, much better on commons. Um yeah, so I think this is, out of all the um, Planeswalker Buddies one, this one stands out as being, like, just the worst. Because all the others at least gain some useful ability that, like, means they can, like, um, fare better in combat or they gain, like, a useful ability. This is just just a death trigger. It's just it's so rubbish as well. It's just a bit of life gain. Yeah, really, really. And the fact it's in two colours as well. Oh, I mean, I suppose... I suppose you can say it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, but then why is it uncommon? Why is it in two colours? Just, oh, it's just, it's so bad. Um, and then four Cruel Raiders. Much better for three mana, I think. 2-3 uh, with Menace, so at least it's got some evasion. Um, yeah, this is this is okay, I think. I mean, it's, it's a common creature with evasion. What more do you want? Uh, right, so then one of the other rares in the deck is Beast Whisperer. This is actually pretty good. Uh, two and double green for a 2-3. Whenever you cast a creature spell, which you do have a lot of in the deck, you draw a card. It's just really straightforward and I think pretty good. Just turning every creature you um you play into a card draw is is just really solid. Yeah, and it's nice that it's got like um sort of like toughness three as well, so it can yeah, it's sort of safe from like most like small removal. It can sort of block small creatures. Yeah, I think I think Beast Whisperer is, is pretty good. Uh, we've got two a rezone lurcher, uh, so two a black and a green for a two two. So this has the new uh, Golgari um, keyword from from Guilds of Ravnica, uh, which is undergrowth. So we've had dredge before, uh, we had scavenge in the last time we went to Ravnica. So now we've got undergrowth. Um, so undergrowth cares about how many creature cards you've got in your graveyard. Every uh, creature has a has technically a different undergrowth ability, but like what it has in common is that like how many creature cards you got in your graveyard. Uh, so Rhythm Lurcher uh, ends the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So 
Right. I guess, I guess this is um, something that's going to become apparent as we go through. You've got all these creatures that care about undergrowth, or like not, I say not a lot, I say not enough to really matter, but you actually in the deck don't have too many ways of getting creatures into your graveyard. Like, um, it's not say like, oh, you know, like previous times we've seen Golgari where you've got kind of like, like mill effects or, you know, like discard effects to get stuff into your graveyard. So this is actually... I don't know. It's, well, I mean, we'll see as we go on. Uh, as of a Rizome launch, a Lurcher, I think this is actually okay. Um, I think if it comes in with at least two counters, so it's a 4-4-4-4, four, 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 it's pretty good. And then it's got, like, um, you know, obviously a much higher ceiling than, uh, you yeah, know, if it comes in with sort of, like, uh, four or more counters, like, yeah, then you're getting, you know, 6-6 six, six for any four mana, and that's really good. Uh, so, yeah, I quite like, quite like this. Uh, a single Lotleth Giant, 6 and a black for a 6-5 undergrowth. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, it does one damage to target opponent for every creature card in your graveyard. Uh, yeah, so it's a big beefy 6-5, comes in and does extra damage as well, so it's still doing something the turn you play it. So that's pretty good. Um, again, if this is doing, I'd say... I'd say at least two damage, and like it should be doing at least two damage by the time you play it. I I would say that's actually okay, you know, for like seven mana for a six five that does two damage to an opponent when it comes in. I would say that's sort of all right, you know. And then again, like with the um the lurcher, it just it just grows. It's just got a um a bigger ceiling from then. Uh, a single crawl foragers, uh, four and a green for a four four. Uh, when it ends the map, uh, undergrowth, um, you gain one life for every creature card in your graveyard. Um, not as exciting compared to the other two, but like. I mean, it's still fine, isn't it? It's still, it's, it's still at least a four four. It still can do that, you know. It as you know, again, as long as I say you're getting sort of like two or three off the undergrowth, I think it's okay. Um, and they've got two glow spore shaman, uh, black and a green for a three one. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, uh, you mill three, which is nice. This is one of the few ways you've got of actually getting stuff into your uh, graveyard straight from your library, and then you can put a land card from your graveyard back on top of your library. Um, so it's okay. And again, I don't think there's any. <laughs> you haven't even got any like sacrifice lands in the deck as well to like benefit from this. You can't double dip. Um, but it's a way of guess you know getting back something you milled back on top of library. I suppose it's a three one for two mana, and it has this effect. I suppose it's it's fine but like the deck needed i feel like more effects like this uh and then we've got a single swarm guild mage so this is the third iteration of like these um the ravica guild mages uh so this time so i'm trying to remember like so the first incarnation they were hybrid mana it was two hybrid mana and they had like one like white ability and like yeah one color a ability and one color b ability essentially uh which were at the same cost uh, then in Return to Ravnica, they were properly two color. They weren't hybrid mana, and their abilities required uh, mana of each color to go off. And they usually had like a um, like a small ability and a big ability. So now in uh, Guilds of Ravnica, so they're they're still two color. They're still properly two color, like not hybrid mana. And they got two abilities, but now I think all their abilities require tapping and mana of only a single color. So it's really interesting actually how all the guild majors like have changed every time we went to Ravnica. It's, I think I think it's pretty cool at least. Um, anyway, Swarm Guild Mage. Uh, so black and a green for a 2-2. Yep, standard. Um, four and a black and tap. Creature you control, get plus one, plus not, and gain medicine to learn 10. That's actually a really nice ability, I think. Like a board-wide um, plus one, plus not, and giving menace to everything, I think is fairly solid. And uh, one and a green and tap, you gain two life. Sure. Um, actually kind of surprised the Swarm Guild Mage, the Guild Mage has nothing to do with kind of milling yourself and getting stuff into your graveyard. Like, um, I'm trying to think, like... <sighs> It's not really on colour, is it, to like do draw and discard in black and green? But you could have done like a yeah, like mill mill three and then put a creature card back on top of your library, something like that, maybe. I don't know. Um but yeah, I, I, as is, I think it's fine. That black ability is really nice. Uh then we've got two iron shell build, uh beetle, one the green for a one one. This has been reprinted like a load of times. Uh when it ends the battle food, you put a plus one plus one camera on target creature. Yep, so it can either be a two two itself or it can buff up something else. I really like iron shell beetle. Um always always good when this kind of green creature shows up. Uh we've got three spinal centipedes. Um so this is kind of like iron shell beetles. Um cousin i suppose uh two and a black for a three two when it dies you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature control um so yeah this is okay these are a nice kind of feel little mirrored pair i think but the um centipede's really nice actually just being like a three two for three and has this like pretty nice death trigger i think is i think that's pretty good actually um and then a single dev corin dissident uh one and a green for a two two you can pay four and a green to give it a plus two plus two to then turn sure fine very sort of filler. Weird, there's only one. I would much rather just have an extra iron shell beetle, but yeah, that's not how these decks are put together. Uh, and then two barters and bats, three and a black for a three-one flyer. Um, yeah, at least it, you know, decent power in the air, I suppose. It's like 
again some some evasion i suppose yeah it's fine um and then a single dowse of lights which is four and a black for a four or five and a single wild ceratoc which is three and a green for a four three yep just some kind of like vanilla chaff filler i suppose yeah they're, i mean they're beefy at least they're at least four power so sure so then the um other end of the deck is bounty of might and this is like a really nice callback to um uh i want to say seeds of strength i want to say from like original ravnica um so four and double green and it has this i love this rule text of like target creature gets plus three plus three turn ten target creature gets plus three plus three and turn ten target creature gets plus three plus three and turn ten so um yeah, so you can spread these out. You can give three creatures plus three plus three. You can give one plus six um, and one plus three, or you can give a single creature like plus nine plus nine. So really, really like how you can like spread this out, and it's like a um, really nice flexible spell. It's yeah, it's expensive at six, but like I think the potential of what it can do uh, makes it worthwhile. So yeah, really nice, and it's at instant speed, which is nice, which is ideal for a buff spell like this that doesn't that doesn't do anything else that only just does power toughness boost. So, yeah, this is this is really nice, I think. Um, and then two prey upon a uh, single green tug creature you control fights a tug creature you don't control so here's his little bit of removal you do have some fairly beefy creatures in here and this can actually help you get creatures into your graveyard for undergrowth i suppose uh, because if you get into a fight that you uh, that you can't win then i suppose you'll get a creature into the graveyard um, and then three dead weights um, single black for an aura that goes on a creature gives something mice two mice two this is really nice um, either makes a big creature much weaker or just kills off an x2 which is perfectly fine i like it and then four Golgari Guild Gates um, and Spatterfield Tapped gives you black or green. And then 12 Swamps and um, twelve swamps and 10 Forests. So yeah, sure, fine. Um, so let's talk what it could have been. So I think I think the big glaring thing is you've got like undergrowth cards. Actually, even not many. I would I would like to see more focus on the under, undergrowth cards because it's like, it's, you know, it's Ravdico. Like we want focus on like the Guild's keyword. And there's just not much in here. And it's just a little bit disappointing. And there's there's not a lot of ways that's all like synergized with it either. It's just kind of like yeah, it it feels very pile of cards. I know that's kind of an easy criticism to make, but this one really does, honestly. Um, so potential other undergrowth cards uh, we could have had here. Uh, Molder Hulk is uh, seven of black and a green for a six six, but it's one less to cast for every creature card in your graveyard. And when it ends the battlefield, you get a land from your graveyard back to the battlefield. So that's okay. So it's just a big beta that can potentially come down for very cheap. Uh, Crawl Harpooner I love uh, so one and a green for 3-2 with reach like at the very minimum it's that um, and then when it ends the battlefield choose up to one type of creature with flying you don't control Crawl Harpooner gets plus x plus 0 to land turn where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard then Crawl Harpooner fights the um, flying creature so this does a lot for any two mana right because at the very least it's a 3-2 with reach um, but at most it comes in and you know kills like a big flyer and then also sticks around um potentially or you know it's even if it doesn't stick around who cares it was two mana to um you know to kill off a flyer and then also go into your graveyard to help all your undergrowth stuff so yeah i think cruel harpooner would have been great in here and a uh, vigor spore worm here so five and a green uh for a six four when it ends the battlefield type creature gets good vigilance and gets plus x plus x turn turn where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard and it can't be blocked by more than one creature again just like buff up another creature so and you know give it some useful abilities just again would have been nice to have more of these like undergrowth cards and then ways to i guess interact with uh undergrowth uh you had erstwhile trooper here so one and black and a green for a two two and you can discard a creature card so obviously which really helps all the undergrowth stuff and it gives it plus two plus two and gains trample in turn 10 so that would have been okay mostly here just to discard to get stuff into the graveyard to to care for those effects uh golgari find broker double black and double green for three four when it ends the battle food you get a permanent card from the graveyard back to your hand that would have been pretty solid and um just pitless gorgon i think could have fit in here as well just um one and two black green hybrid for a two two with death touch just you know really straightforward but also pretty good um yeah everyone likes a cheap death touch creature um so overall i'm kind of like not impressed by it honestly um because i th the, what annoys me is like there is you know that you've got these kind of cool undergrowth cards and stuff but like there's you know there's no way of getting stuff into the graveyard to like properly synergize with them so like you're not getting the full effect from them and i guess oh, i guess you could argue like oh they're expensive so you won't play them until late game anyway when you're like your cheaper creatures have died off anyway but like we can still do better than that we can still like find ways to have synergy with the keyword um yeah, and I'm I'm not like impressed by Vraska in this. Like I think her signature cards are all like pretty rubbish. Like her buddy card, the attendant, is really, really bad. Um her search spell is really expensive. 
Um, yeah, not not a big fan of this one, but I'd like to hear what other people think about it, obviously. Um, if you've got any thoughts or stories or comments, opinions about the deck or any of the cards in it, um, stick a comment below. I'll give it a read. But now we're done with uh, Guilds of Ravnica, so we're going to move on in the next video into Ravnica Allegiance and look at the Planeswalker decks from that. So I hope you join me for that. But until then, thanks for watching and listening, and have a great day.